I've been talking with Uli Steck at his home in Riggenberg, Interlaken. After speaking about his exploits on Annapurna, Uli began to reflect on his time on Everest, where he was involved in the now infamous incident with the Sherpas. I had a really, really hard time and it changed completely my, my personality. I lost a lot after this story, you know, I get a lot of people, you know, they, they say, like in front of you, they're really nice and kind and like your friends. And then in the back, they, they would hit you with a knife. Mm. And, and this, I have a really, still a really hard time to trust people now. I mean, the stories, you can find out everything that happened, but do you feel that your side has been told now? I have told my part, how it was, how I act, and there is not more to, to mm. tell. It's like, the Sherpas tell their way, the guys tell their way. We can discuss that endless. It's like, I don't need to talk about it anymore. Yeah. I, I have my conclusion about it, and that's it. If I want to go back to Everest, I just accept that, how it is, or I just leave it. So, Do you I think you'd go back? I don't know if I go back or not, but I mean, we got an extension for our permit, which is kind of like, <laughs> like, yeah, it's no, kind of it's ironic almost. No, it's kind of nice, you know. It's like a statement that they were wrong. Yeah, if they extend the permit, they usually yeah. don't do that. So everybody can judge on their own what what they think about it. Do you think as time goes by, it will feel like unfinished business, and you will want to go back? I know you can't tell now, but yeah, but what's this, your is feeling? A, this is exactly why I say, I say I'm not say I never go back there because this is still it's still the earliest project, and I mean I had on Annapurna after 2008, I waited five years, and now I felt ready to go back. Maybe in a couple of years, I feel ready to go back to Everest. But when I go back, it's a, it's a different feeling, you know, and. I know the way how Everest works now, I know it now better and if I'm willing to go there, I just play the game or I don't go there. So you accept that that's yeah. just how it is? I thought I did accept it even before, but maybe it was not like what people expect on that mountain. Do you think some of the, the magic of Everest has gone as a result though, forever for you? I mean, the magic of Everest for me, it's, it's, a, it's a weird relationship, you know. It's, it, I mean, it's the highest mountain in the world, but you know, there are all these fixed lines and people go up there with the oxygen and, and then you go up there without oxygen and then you have to explain why you go without oxygen. It's kind of like this magic is it, not there anymore mm. and it wasn't there before uh, last spring. I climb, lots of people climb and they don't want to climb Everest. I don't want to climb Everest, but part of you always wonders what it must be like to climb it. And that's always there and for, yeah, for I mean, no reason, because I, mean, I know it's not a very interesting climb. But, but it's, it's the highest mountain in the world yeah. and it's the, the altitude is really interesting. Yeah. The 8,848 meter, that's interesting. You must really notice that from, say, Annapurna. Yeah. I mean, it's Annapurna, a big difference, it's a huge difference. Yeah. It's like, you cannot compare that like, yeah. with altitude. Yeah. So, that's what is interesting on Everest, and that's what makes me accept all around on Everest to go there. Mm -hmm. I get the impression that um, you don't always enjoy some elements of being a sponsored climber. I don't like to be a sponsored climber, you know. I, of course, I, I was choosing the way, I was choosing the route to, to be a sponsored climber, uh, because it gives me the opportunity to to climb all these mountains, I climbed all these hard routes. But there is a lot of things I totally not agree, you know, like sometimes all this tasty talking around climbing, I get sick about it, you know. <laughs> but, but it's part of the game. Mm. So if you say yes, there is not always uh, the sunny side, there is also the, the back side of, of something. Do you worry that in some ways being a sponsored climber, you lose sight of why you climbed in the first place? It's, it's really easy to, to lose that, you know, like, especially now when you get older, you know, you, you can still live with your name, you know, you don't really have to climb hard. Yeah. It's like, wow. But 
I want to climb for me, mm. and I want I decide what I'm doing. And I, until now, I always did that. It's, it was never like a sponsor is paying my expedition. I just have my salary from a sponsor, and I invest the money in an expedition or in a project. If 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 I go to Everest, it's just more expensive than going to I don't know to a six thousand meter peak. But I make the decision what I'm doing. Next week on Climbing Daily. And there was this little tunnel and went down that and that was the piece of resistance. Amazing overhanging wall in the bottom chamber. Adam travelled to Valence in southern France where he's just won the latest round of the International Federation of Sport Climbing World Cup.